Well, talks between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt over the use of the River Nile have collapsed. Sudanese Foreign Minister Ibrahim Gandor said that the 17-hour discussion between foreign ministers and intelligence officers failed to resolve differences over Ethiopia's $4 billion Grand Renaissance Dam being built along the Nile, but couldn't specify what the disagreements were. Egypt is opposed to Ethiopia's aim to produce 6,000 megawatts of hydroelectric power, saying that upstream diversion of the longest river in the world would have catastrophic effects on its water supply and agriculture. Moreover, it maintains that it has historic rights as guaranteed by signed treaties, which gives it access to 87% of the waters and a veto power to upstream projects. Sudan, on the other hand, has got over its disapproval of the Ethiopian project and now sees it as a solution to the flooding problem in the country. Tanzania's President John Magufuli has officially inaugurated the Great Mary Rani Wall built north of the country to protect Tanzanite, a rare gemstone. In September, Mr. Magufuli ordered the military to build the wall, which is 15 miles long, in order to control illegal mining and trading activities. The blue-violet Tanzanite gemstone is found only in the East African state. This is the first time Tanzania was, or rather has built a wall to protect its mines, and some believe that other countries grappling with smuggling may also do the same. Well, in South Sudan, landmines continue to pose a threat to civilians, and this is despite uh, the demining efforts there. The United Nations Mine Action Service says that since 2004, more than 5,000 people have either been killed or injured by landmines and unexploded ordnance. Well, from health centers to schools, everyone is at risk, and efforts are being made to sensitize people on ways they can protect themselves. Landmines have a long history in South Sudan, the world's youngest nation that won independence from Sudan in 2011 after a long and violent liberation struggle. After just two years, the political squabble escalated into renewed civil war in late 2013, fracturing the new nation along ethnic lines. As part of the International Day for Mine Awareness and Assistance in Mine Action, the United Nations Mine Action Service, or UNMAS, a component of the United Nations mission in South Sudan, conducted the mining exercise in parts of the country. The school's been closed and that's for the safety of the children um, <clears throat> whilst the operation's taking place. However, you can see also see how close the mines are to the school. So with actual, the, the area was being denied to the school children uh, and that's one of the priorities. More than 4 million mines and explosive devices have been found and destroyed in South Sudan over the last decade. St. Matthew Primary and Secondary School in Lubonok, located about a two-hour drive south of South Sudan's capital, Juba, has had to be evacuated after close to 10 landmines and unexplored ordnance were found on its grounds by both students and teachers. Students now have to learn under a tree, a safe distance away, until their school grounds have been cleared. The landmines were there, ahead of it, a distance of less than... 100 meters, we collected landmines by ourselves, we put them under the tree because we were, we were cultivating them, we were clearing the place so that the children move. We collected those we can find and put them outside there. So seeing those ones, we try to restrict the children and it was good that the different older the kids we were taking it as if it is a bit lighter to keep them around. And seeing the effect of these landmines that we were putting there, we were having also a fear of otherwise they will explode and also cause a danger to reduce the small children who are there. According to Ladna, it will take at least 10 years to clear up the whole country. The health of a Kenyan man who has been on hunger strike to protest against what he says is government abuse of the constitution has worsened. Boniface Ugutu is one of the reported opposition lawyer Miguna Miguna's sympathizers. He started with his strike last Thursday camping under a busy road bridge in the western city of Kisumu. 
He told local media that he decided to go on a hunger strike after the government refused to obey several court orders to release Miguna, who was eventually deported. Supporters have been giving him glucose and warm water. His protest has attracted crowds and activists have taken advantage of the gathering to educate members of the public about the constitution.